they decided to just start blanket passing some very stupid laws in North Carolina that were really bad for the state. This Jody Bruch on Politics video is brought to you by Yerba Mate. Yerba, Yerba Mate? Anyway, uh, it's a drink, and today I'm going to talk about something that is probably pretty long overdue. Yeah. The I've made no bones on this channel about how I think leftism is basically a social cancer in the United States of America. Possibly in other places, too. To be completely honest, um, what a lot of people are calling progress or progressive is regressive. It's not good. It's a prime example of driving yourself up a mountain and then off a cliff. For example, just as one example, the whole gay rights thing, um, it was fine when it was gay people just want to get married. Don't know why they couldn't just be like, the state should have nothing to do with marriage in the first place, and you should be able to just marry whoever you want and not sign a contract with the state. But okay, whatever. You do you, bro. But now we're to the point where people are trying to normalize actual pedophilia and basically giving people who claim to be trans a free pass to violate rules and abuse people and just basically be their own special class of citizen solely on the basis of adopting that label. I have made it very clear that I think leftism is pretty screwed up and needs to stop. It needs to die in the United States. And because of this, I have often been labeled all kinds of things such as alt-right, right-wing, Trump-tard, all of these things that insinuate I'm some kind of right-wing nutjob, extremist, and that's just not the case. What we really need is to talk about the right because I'm more of a centrist libertarian, very radical libertarian, uh, very slightly left-leaning centrist. I am not a left-wing nut job. I am not a right-wing nut job, and that guy's going too fast. But the right doesn't get enough hate on my channel, I think, and so I want to talk about one specific thing that I see as the biggest problem by far with the right wing. The reason that when I look at the right wing, they might say some things that I really agree with, but then they say some things that I go, oh, oh no, 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 I'm just going to go walk back over here for a minute and hide because that's fucking crazy. The right wing's biggest problem by far is religion. Religion and religious things are the cancer of the right wing. They are the reason that the right wing needs to probably take a few drugs and calm the fuck down. The right wing needs to separate from religion because the religion aspect of it is what is responsible for the vast majority of the problems with it. I don't have a problem with not treading too hard too fast. I don't have a problem with backing off, thinking about what you're doing before you decide to go and be progressive. Is your progress really progress, or is it just walking forward for the sake of looking like you're not walking in a different direction? But the right wing takes it too far. <clears throat> to some extent, there is a regressive element that really needs to go away. The ultra-religious side of the right has always been the side that makes me hate them. I wrote a series of, well, I was trying to emulate the old zines of the 70s and 80s, the electronic publications that went around amongst mostly left-wing progressive hacker types. Um, I made a series called This World Sucks, and one of the entries was about conservative Christians and how they're basically a social cancer. Now that might seem a little weird coming from someone who spends all this time saying that left-wingers are a social cancer. Well, right-wingers are a social cancer too, but it comes from the religious side of it. Because if you think about what right-wing or conservative or whatever is, it's not necessarily that bad. It, there are a lot of good things about the right-wing, or at least what we associate with the right-wing or conservative in general. The gun thing. 
Yeah, in general, the right these days is also about the freedom thing, because the left sure as shit isn't. But it goes too far in the religion aspect whenever we take the freedom thing, which I think of as, say, freedom of speech. You have the freedom to say what you want to say without repercussions. That is what freedom of speech means. That is the philosophy. That's not the legal definition, but that's the philosophy. You should be free to speak your mind, whatever it is that you're thinking. Entertain weird, bad, nutty, unpopular thoughts. Thoughts that other people may hate without repercussions. Otherwise, your speech is not free. It is limited in some way. And absolute free speech isn't possible simply because people are people, and there's no way to completely separate what is said and what you hear from how you feel about it. <clears throat> that being said, whenever the freedom becomes the freedom of my religion requires me to be able to restrict your freedom, that's bullshit. Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby, the case, what was it, Burwell versus Hobby Lobby, I think? The Hobby Lobby case where they were able to successfully keep employees from buying certain contraceptive measures with the health insurance that is basically part of their pay. I have a major problem with that. Let, let's go through the logic real quick, because the whole basis of this argument that made it succeed was religion. But, wind it back. Burwell v. Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby argues, we are a religious organization, we have deep religious beliefs, and because for some reason corporations are people under the law, and people can have religious freedom, therefore corporations have religious freedom, <coughs> well, what, um, what, what they're doing with this, you know, anti-birth stuff, this, this birth control or contraception or whatever, violates our religious beliefs. Okay. But you're providing health insurance to your employees. So here's the way that the health insurance thing generally works. An employee is paid in money. But another thing an employee can be paid in is benefits. These may include contributions to your retirement fund, or they may include health insurance. Now, at some point, the government decided that any company with 50 or more employees must provide the employees with health insurance. Um, but that's a whole other quagmire I don't want to get into right now. It's a bit off topic. The point is, companies provide health insurance instead of pay, in large part, not just because the government says they have to, but also because it lets them give employees money without having to pay tax. Now, you might not know this, but for every dollar that you pay an employee when you're a business, the employee has to pay payroll tax and income tax to the federal and state governments, but also the employer matches some of those taxes. <clears throat> so when you look at your check and you see that you made $300, but the federal and state governments took 50 of your $300 and kept it, your employer's also paying 50 of those $300, but that's not shown on your check. That's not deducted from you. That's taken from the employer. So the employer is actually paying more money. This is an oversimplification, but it's there to make a, to, to prove a point. If the employer has to pay, let's just say $50, for every $300 they pay you, or they can give you $300 worth of health insurance benefits and not pay that $50 in extra money, what the hell do you think they're gonna do? They're gonna be like, okay, we could pay you you know, let's say 20 bucks an hour, or we could pay you 15 bucks an hour plus five bucks an hour in health insurance, and then we only have to pay taxes that the employee doesn't see on their pay stub for the $15, but not the five, so we're saving money. We're giving the employee the same amount of money, money, but we're not paying hidden payroll taxes on that because health insurance isn't normal income. The government gives it this special classification. Same thing with the retirement benefits. If the employer gives you a retirement benefit match or whatever, they get tax benefits on that. It's not about the employee. The employer doesn't actually give a shit whether you get tax benefits or whether you have retirement or you have health care. They give a shit about the fact that they don't have to pay these taxes on the back end to, because they're not paying you normal money, they're paying you special money in little little envelopes that they mark, this is for health insurance, and they shoot it off to a health insurance company on your behalf. 
deducted out of your pay, but they're getting tax benefits for it. So what Hobby Lobby's saying is that, hey, this health insurance we're giving employees so we don't have to pay as much tax, yeah, it, parts of that violate our religious freedom. We, we should be free to not pay for these contraceptive measures. Well, here's the thing, you're not paying for those contraceptive measures. You're paying the employees a paycheck, okay? It's part of the employee's compensation package. It's employee pay. All you're doing is earmarking it and throwing it at another company, but you're not directly paying for it. The employee's directly paying for it. You are just sending it on their behalf because you get tax breaks for it. But the argument is that they have religious freedom. This violates their religion to, for them to pay for these certain contraceptive measures. And people will bring up things like, oh, but it was only like four specific contraceptive measures that they had an opposite to that. There's so many more that they didn't say violated their freedom. You know, there's all these other ways that they could get some contraception. Why can't they make a concession? Well, why can't they make a concession? Because the argument that it's the employer's religious freedom being violated by the employee paying for a service with the employee's compensation is bullshit. It has nothing to do with the employer at all. It's not their freedom, but they call it their freedom. You don't have the freedom to tell me how I spend my money. This is what I think about you telling me how I can spend my money. It's my money. It's my health insurance. It's my retirement plan. The employer doesn't get to tell me how I spend my paycheck. The employer doesn't get to tell me how I spend my health insurance funds. The employer doesn't get to tell me how I can spend my retirement funds. Granted, like I said, that is a simplification of it all, but philosophically, this is the way that it is. They don't get to tell me these things. But all too often we see all of these different things shot down for other people that have nothing to do with them under the guise of religious freedom. It all comes down to religion. The thing is, I'm not violating your religious beliefs if I say Jesus Christ or I take the Lord's name in vain. I'm not violating your religious freedom if I practice a different religion or no religion at all, if I believe something different, if I donate to pro-abortion causes. That doesn't violate your religious freedom. That's my money. It's not a violation of your religious freedom because you pay my paycheck and then I decide to send that money off say to, um, I don't know, some leftist. I don't, I don't care. Pick any leftist. If that's the way I choose to spend my pay, my money, you have no say in that. It has nothing to do with your religious freedom. You're not buying contraception for you. You're buying, you're giving me the money that I then use to buy the contraception. But do you see the difference here? That's the freedom of the person spending their private property, their money. But they want to claw that back under this religious freedom notion. And I, I think there was something, I don't remember exactly, and I may get this wrong, but I think there was like a restoring religious freedom act or something like that. But there are so many things that are shot down because of religion, because like, well, this is unfair to Christians or this, you know, this is unfair to Muslims. You could even take it there. But a lot of the right wing, a lot of their religious freedom arguments are bullshit arguments that have nothing to do with their religious freedom. It'll be like, it's a violation of my religious freedom for this other person to do something. That has nothing to do with you. Absolutely nothing to do with you. A lot of the right wing's problems come from this notion that they have the religious freedom to make other people slaves. Pretty much. Now, I know that that's a bit hyperbolic, but the point is made. I am not your slave. I do not believe in any religion. I am agnostic. I don't believe in no God. I don't believe in a God. I believe that whatever is, is, and I don't have the capacity to understand. And how do you even have the hubris to think that God is this thing that is beyond the understanding of normal human beings, yet somehow you have the fucking secret private line to God, and you know exactly what God wants? So, yeah. But that, again, is straying a bit from this discussion. It's a discussion for another day. The point is, I do not have religion. I do not have religious beliefs. Anything I do, unless I am forcing you to not be capable of worshiping, going to church, donating to the causes you believe in, you don't get to argue that your religious freedom is being violated. 
<clears throat> you don't get to argue that your religious freedom trumps my freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly. Especially when it really has nothing to do with your religious beliefs or your ability to practice your religion. It is not a violation of your freedom to practice your religion for me to tell you that you need to get the fuck off my property to practice your religion. But that's the kind of dumb shit arguments that you see some right-wingers pull. They'll, they seriously think that they can do anything they want to do, that they can trample over anything that anyone says or does, as long as they claim that what they're doing violates their religion. And they will get as bad as the worst of the leftists twisting reality, twisting words, twisting facts, twisting the way things are, interpreting them in bad faith, in the worst possible light, in ways that nobody would ever interpret such things. They'll get really crazy with this shit, exactly the same way that these psycho leftists will, whenever they write their psycho headlines about Donald Trump. Pick any major news publication's headlines about Donald Trump, and then read the contents and find out the headline was basically bullshit, that they twisted really hard. The whole fact checkers against you know, Republicans, Donald Trump all the time, how the fact checks would be like, <clears throat> hey, they, you know, a guy said something, and then the fact check question is this really narrowly tailored specific thing that isn't the thing but makes it sound like it's the thing, and that's just tailored so that they can say false. Same thing happens on the right with the religious kooks, with the conservative Christian nut jobs, with the uber religious, and frankly, they're kind of mixed in with the, um, the, how would I call it, the irrationally patriotic, perhaps? There are a lot of people, and, and I don't know how to put this in a separate video, because they kind of mix together. There are a lot of people who have this notion that patriotism ties in with their religious beliefs, ties in with some fucking stupid authoritarian shit. For example, police. I, I don't, have a problem with police, except for the fact that all authority is inherently evil. Police are inherently evil, but they're a necessary evil, because if, I, if you don't have any police, look at any given major city in the United States now that has a left-wing mayor, and you can see exactly why police are necessary, because you can't even have a life, run a business, you can't make, you can't make a life for yourself. You will be dragged down into the gutter without the police there to enforce the laws that everybody in society has agreed upon. So police are evil, but they're also a necessary evil to, demit, to defend your freedoms. And I have problems with the way that police are put in power. I think that police should generally be an elected sort of thing, or at least more of police should be an elected position, maybe the police chief. But that's, again, straying a bit. But you've got these right-wing kooks that are like, oh yeah, police, just, I back the blue, and it's like Blue Lives Matter, um, did, regardless, period. Fuck everybody else. If you don't, if you don't back the blue, then you are, you know, subhuman scum that deserve nothing and should get the fuck out of the country. Those people are insane, and they largely are overlapped with these religious nut jobs. They are fanatic lunatics on the right. And they're cancer. They're absolute cancer. And they're the reason that whenever I look at someone like Donald Trump and I look at his policies and I go, okay, most of what Trump did, on just net positive, Trump's actions in the White House were a net positive, but there were some really fucking stupid things that Trump did too, like suggesting that red flag laws were a good idea. Are you, are you just insane, Donald? What the fuck's wrong with you? And part of it is that I know that the guy has some religious bent to him. And it's just the way that it is. It's so many people, especially older people, have these kooky religious bents to them, and they're fanatical about it. And they basically think that if you're not part of that tribe, then you deserve to have your throat slit or be locked into a, a hole with the key thrown away, and they don't care what happens to you. You're not human. You're dehumanized. So yeah, I, I, I have a hard time supporting anybody anybody with an R beside their name for the same reasons I have a hard time supporting anyone with a D beside their name. <clears throat> now listen, I don't mean for this to seem, seem like some kind of fence post bullshit where I'm trying to pretend like 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not really on the left or on the right. I'm a fence sitter trying to keep both sides happy. That isn't the case at all. The problem is that the left is way worse than the right now. In the 90s, that wasn't the case, but now they are fucking psycho. And the right is kind of like in a boxing match, they're kind of on the ropes. Like they're getting back up and they're starting to swing again now. But now that we're seeing the right, the pendulum swinging back that way and they're getting back up with renewed vigor at the boxing match of politics, we're seeing a lot of the bad come out in addition to the good. Ron DeSantis in Florida, the whole book banning thing, there were a lot of lies, outright lies from left-wingers about what Ron DeSantis was doing in Florida with the whole parental rights and education thing. There are an amazing amount of lies. Now, I have looked into this stuff, I've read the statutes and such, and there may be some truth to the notion that Ron DeSantis, that after a lot of discussion on some of these bills that he got passed, may have done some things, um, or him and, and Congress, obviously, but that the bills may have taken a different shape that wasn't necessarily in line with the original discussion and talking points by right-wingers. There is some merit to the notion that maybe Florida's gone overboard in a couple of things, but you would never be able to find that information because all the mainstream media news outlets are constantly parroting the lies, the big lies, about what's going on in Florida. So the religious right is a big fucking problem, the religious fanatical right primarily, but they're not even remotely a problem compared to the left with all of the major organizations and institutions in America backing them. All the colleges and universities, all the media outlets, the fucking White House, just there's so much. The FBI so much favors the left that they are by far the more dangerous even though the right's getting back up. And we need to be careful because the right will get back up and they will do dumb shit like what the North Carolina Republicans did once they took complete power in 2012. They decided to just start blanket passing some very stupid laws in North Carolina that were really bad for the state. And I, this is way before the whole Amendment 1 controversy with the bathrooms and stuff. Just both sides are full of assholes that will gladly ruin everything if you give them too much power. But because the left has so much power, I'm worried the pendulum will swing the other way. And these bullshit, I'm such a patriotic, God-fearing person, and if you're not, then you deserve to die a horrible, torturous, slow death. I'm worried that those people will get in power. And basically, you're just switching between two parties that are diarrhea dumping all over your face. I don't want to live in this country. I don't want to be in a place where we're basically just switching between people punishing us non-consensually. And that feels like what we're doing. Anyway, um, I need to look up some directions, so this video is going to have to end. But the point is that the right is fucking nuts. They are fucking nuts. They just aren't powerful enough to be a concern right now, but you need to watch it. There's going to be a snapback, and I can't wait for the left to go the fuck away. But we really need to be vigilant to make sure the right doesn't rise back up and basically become the other side of the coin. I'm Jody Bruchon Politics. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.